все! Ура! Пошли коктейли. Вот вам, ребятки. Hello Blazers, so this is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How you guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. Today's video, guys, I wanted to make a video about what is going on right now in Belarus. I already know that this video is 100% going to be demonetized, just like every video I make about any protest, because there's going to be a lot of graphic footage in this, police brutality. It's not nice, but I don't care, because I just want to make this video to spread the words and also to basically show my support to my Belarusian brothers fighting for their freedom. Now, let's get straight to the point. I'm sure if you're not living under a rock, you've already seen the news about what's going on in Belarus. I hope you have at least, because if you haven't, this video is for you. And if you already have, maybe you'll learn something new from this video as well. Basically, what is going on right now is that Belarus is going through a literal revolution. I'm sure you must be familiar with the political situation in Belarus. The president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, has been the president of the country since 1994. He's very often called the last dictator of Europe, because, I mean, I guess people just don't count so one very, very big country as part of Europe. <coughs> but yeah, basically, for the past 26 years, Belarus has had zero political freedom, zero freedom of speech, freedom of demonstration. But one thing that was always held in Belarus is that it was never a sort of hostile country. The people of Belarus always lived a relatively stable life, as you could say. And the country has always been very much corrupt and everything, but Belarus was always thought of as a country that is has no potential to rebel. And it was used by Russians as well to show like a good example. You know, Ukraine had a revolution and people were like, yeah, Ukrainians are idiot idiots, but Belarusians are brothers, they're just like us they know what's good they know that authoritarianism is the way forward and they will never rebel it's never gonna happen well guess what it's happening. So a whole bunch of factors came into the fact that Belarus is rebelling right now. First of all, for the past two years or so, Belarus has been uh, getting a more and more sort of prominent oppositional movement. A Belarusian YouTuber called Sergei Tikhanovsky has uh, made a lot of videos exposing the Belarusian government for its corruption and for everything they're doing. And he started a very big oppositional movement. And also what happened is that the coronavirus pandemic hit and Lukashenko literally denied the coronavirus and pretended like it's not real and people started to die. And the the coronavirus situation in the country was just ridiculous and people started doubting Lukashenko like for the very first time. Even people that used to support him for years and years started thinking like maybe there's something fishy with this guy. And so what happened is that on the 9th of August, Belarus had a presidential election. Yes, it's technically not, a, it's technically a democratic country, but Lukashenko has basically won every single election he ever had with like over 90% of votes. And so what was going to happen with this election is that it was going to be very much different because the aforementioned Tikhanovsky, the YouTube wanted to participate in the election and also there were a couple of other oppositional candidates for example Babarika who also was uh, kind of popular and also was a real competition to Lukashenko basically it was looking like Lukashenko would actually have the potential to lose this election and so what Lukashenko decided to do is to do basically the same thing as Russia does just arrest the oppositional candidates and not let them participate in the election so both Babarika and Tikhanovsky got arrested for some basically they started getting incriminating for a whole bunch of shady stuff they probably didn't do and the entire idea is just to not let them participate in the election. But what happened is that the Belarusian opposition did a 400 IQ play. Tikhanovsky has a wife named Svetlana Tikhanovska. And literally, the entirety of the opposition of Belarus has united and they voiced their support for Tikhanovska and she actually came out as a candidate for the presidency. And surprisingly, the Belarus officials actually registered her as a real candidate. Now, this is where the real fun part starts. Basically, the elections in Belarus are completely falsified ever single time they're extremely corrupt in Belarus they literally ban polls and exit polls like literal basic things that every election ever has basically the only way to ever see any results are just from the polls that are provided by the government some supervisors actually were arrested journalists that were trying to cover the election were arrested there were audio leaks of people on polling stations like talking about which percentages basically we should have as a result the Belarusian government lied about the amount of people that actually went in to vote people that are in contact with the uh, oppositional candidates like Tikhanovsky started getting arrested and perhaps the most interesting fact is that uh, you know the few days before the election uh, about three days before the election military vehicles started flooding in into the city people started taking shots and videos of it military vehicles military personnel automobiles full of barbed wire basically Lukashenko was literally sending in the army to the city to uh, stop and repress any sort of protest that might occur after the election because he 
damn well knew that people are not gonna believe it and people are gonna very much see through the bullshit. Also, another interesting thing that happened is that the Belarusian government started turning off internet for a lot of people. So suddenly internet uh, started disappearing for a lot of people. And right now is the protests are going on, which we're gonna get to. Everybody in Belarus is experiencing severe internet shortages. So they just decided to turn off everybody's internet so that they can't see any outside sources of information. They can't see any other information about the polls or whatever. It's insane. And also when people actually came to vote on the voting day, suddenly Lukashenko started believing in the coronavirus because only groups of five people uh, were allowed to enter pol the polling stations and only five supervisors were allowed per polling station and all those supervisors were basically biased to the governments. They were government workers. There was like footage online of uh, polling station workers like climbing out of windows with uh, some sort of uh, bag, presumably bags that include ballots that are not for Lukashenko. So yeah, it was an absolute joke of an election, absolute corrupt falsified election that was just an act to basically then just say some numbers that were already created before the election. And now let's get to the main part of it, it's basically the results of the election. Officially Belarus said that uh, Lukashenko has got 80% of the votes and that Tikhanovskaya, the wife of the oppositional candidate that is now arrested, has received about 10% of the votes. Again, because independent exit polls are literally prohibited in Belarus, people were only able to basically find out the exit poll results on some foreign polling stations. So thousands, actually thousands of people came to vote in the cities like Kiev, Moscow, so Ukraine, Russia, Poland, other countries of Europe. People who have immigrated but have Belarusian citizenship have came in to the vote. Actually, in fact, for example, in Moscow, the line to the Belarusian embassy to vote actually spanned a few kilometers and people stood in the line for hours. And basically, the results on exit polls in other countries, on foreign polling stations, are the complete opposites. Uh, Tikhanovskaya has over 70% of the votes, while Lukashenko has like 9%. Now, I know some of you guys might say right now, okay, what does it matter, right? We don't know the real results in Belarus, right? Maybe in Belarus is true, everybody is for Lukashenko and only these immigrants are voting for Tikhanovskaya. Yeah, I guess, you will, you will be right, but uh, the only problem is that uh, there's been protests going on for two days in a row now across the entire country of Belarus where literally everybody is going out and is against Lukashenko and hates the fact that he won, won this election. They're protesting it, they're being shot by, they're being stunned by, they're being murdered by the police and also literally not a single person has come out in support of Lukashenko. Not a single group of like 10 people has come out of support of, with support of Lukashenko. Do you think if Lukashenko really won with 80% of the votes, there would be uh, thousands of people out on the streets and not anybody would come out in support of Lukashenko and try to fight these people or something? Do you really think so? Come on, dude. So, now let's get to the protests. The protests have been going down for two days straight now and they're continuing still, so the situation is still in progress. Basically, it's a complete shit show. Uh, so, the night after the election, thousands, uh, tens of thousands of Belarusians came out in Minsk and also thousands thousands came out in other major cities of the country. You need to understand that Belarus is a relatively small country, over, only has over 9 million people living in it, so the numbers are very big. And what started happening is that basically the SWATs in uh, in Belarus called Amon, they started trying to squash the protests by the most violent means possible. And it's actually insanely messed up and it's uh, actually way worse than even what we see on the protests going on in Russia, when in Russia the SWATs is coming in and trying to disrupt the protests. Belarus is going sicko mode. So in Belarus, the police is literally using batons, they're beating people with batons, they're shooting people with rubber bullets, uh, tens of people, if not at this point probably in the hundreds, of people were injured by rubber bullets, so they're literally shooting at people at this point, not with real bullets yet, let's hope that doesn't happen, but they're shooting, the police is shooting rubber bullets at people, there are a lot of people with very severe injuries, the police is using water cannon to try to uh, shake people off, the police is arresting people, apparently on the first day of the first night around 4,000 people were arrested. The police is also using tear gas and flashbangs, which are also uh, very, very harmful for your health and uh, a whole bunch of people were also injured by flashbangs and it's getting crazy and crazier. But what's really interesting is that in Belarus, the people are very angry and they act very differently to like what people in the Russian process do, for example. So for example, in Russia, there's very often the situation where you have like a public uh, demonstration, oppositional demonstration against Putin or whatever, and the Amon literally rushes in and starts arresting people just taking people for no reason whatsoever and just starts like grabbing them, you know, ripping their clothes. I mean, it's never a good sight to behold. And what do the people that are standing around do? They don't uh, come in, they don't try to fight these people off. What they do is that they scream uh, pazor, like shame. So they only scream shame, shame, and the people are taken away and arrested.
arrested. In Belarus, however, people fight for each other right now. Like, there's footage on the internet where, like, the Amon is coming in and starting arresting people and literally, like, a hundred people start rushing in there and just uh, being the fuck out of the Belarusian Amon. Like I said, guys, Belarus is always, was always thought, especially portrayed in Russian propaganda as a country that has zero process potential. You always thought of Belarus as, like, a country in, where nothing's ever gonna change because even if in Russia we do have demonstrations and even if, like, people don't fight the police, we still have them. But in Belarus, you barely ever had any protests because, like, the freedom there is just so limited is that people are extremely scared and we always thought of Belarus as like a country which would never act like this but seeing this now is actually like it's amazing because throughout the years in Russian propaganda we've been fed that Belarus are like going the right way and they'll never rebel like this Ukrainian idiots but guess what they are all right so all that happened tear gas flashbangs rubber bullets a lot of injuries water cannons but perhaps the worst thing happens uh, during the day of the first of the first day of the protest a young man was unfortunately uh, ran over and killed by a police truck that was speeding uh, down the streets. Absolutely horrible events which only angered the people even more. And also another thing that uh, has gone viral on the internet recently around the entire sort of Russian speaking world as well. Um, a video of uh, the police uh, of, in Belarus ruthlessly beating up two people near some uh, residential building. Not even like near the protest. Apparently uh, it was a man and a woman that were just sitting there, sitting there on a bench and the police came up to them and started beating them up saying stuff like you should have stayed home and stuff like that just beating them up for no reason whatsoever it's literally like it's literally very close to what you see in america with like the police brutality so yeah that has gone viral and basically now we'll get into the second day of the protest and the second day is actually where it gets insane uh the second day is when the police actually started shooting people even more but what actually is going down now is that uh the people the protesters are getting more and more angry and they're not afraid to uh use some very very hard measures and actually what is going down is that the protesters started using Molotov cocktails and throwing them at the police also the people started building their own barricades and just the amount of protesters is increased and we actually got some really interesting clips out of it as well where uh, sometimes the police is actually overwhelmed by the amount of protesters to the point where the police has to run away from the protesters <laughs> It's a very unusual sight to behold and it's it brings me a lot of joy, I'm gonna be completely honest. So yeah, the last night was basically very, very similar. I feel like there's an overall sense of community and unity right now in Belarus within the protesters and within the entire population because what's going on is that very often the police actually chases people that are running away, for example, and people in Belarus right now are opening up their, uh, like, staircases to the residential buildings, the entrances to the residential buildings. Also, people are letting in people that are running away from the police and people that are injured to their apartments because people that are actually injured they're afraid that if they're gonna go to the hospital they're gonna be like registered as a participant of the protest and maybe like trialed later or something like that so yeah people are really uniting right now helping right now and uh, my biggest respects my biggest support goes out to the people of Belarus right now and to be completely honest I'm really scared about the development of the situation because I know that even if Belarus is actually successful in the revolution and they're gonna overthrow Lukashenko and uh, he's gonna go away I don't feel like Russia is gonna be just sitting there and letting it happen and uh, we might see a military intervention like Ukraine, which in result would lead Russia to become even more of a shut-in and even more scorned by the uh, Western society, which it would deserve, I guess, right? But I don't want it. I don't stand for it. It's not me. And I don't want the second collapse of our economy just because uh, we want a part of Belarus now, apparently, because they decided to be a free country. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm just really, really scared right now. So yeah, I'm closely paying attention to the situation in Belarus. It's still going on. Actually, today uh, is the third day of the protest. Uh, later during the the day that people are gonna be going out outside and protesting but right now actually what's happening is that pretty much the entire country a lot of factories are going on worker strikes so people are going on strike they're not they're refusing to work unless you know the real results are uh, published and you know Lukashenko goes away or whatever so yeah the situation is very much still in development uh, I'm probably gonna make another video on this uh, later down the line in which we're gonna discuss what's going on but yeah 
I just wanted to get this out and get the information out and I know this video is gonna get demonetized again but there's no way that I can't not talk about this I'm very deeply invested in this thing so yeah that is pretty much all I wanted to say in this video today thank you guys so much for watching it if you guys did enjoy it please make sure to slap the like on it and also guys please make sure to once again check out my patreon link down in the description if you guys want to support me support my channel support what I do and yeah guys thank you so much for watching this video Живи Беларусь and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.